The rift between Twitch and Sam heats up and gets pretty nasty, prompting Twitch to temporarily head out of town to help an old friend with a murder case. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of Sam and Twitch Case Files, number two from Image Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Sam and Twitch Case Files, number two from Image Comics. Let's talk about the credits. This issue was written by Todd McFarlane with co-writing credits to John Groff. Art by Simon Kridransky, colors by FCO Placencia, letters by Tom Orzachowski, and cover art for the main cover, cover A, is drawn by Thaddeus Robeck. Before we jump in, let's talk about what happened in the previous issue, which was the issue number one. So we spent a lot of time in that issue building up the world of Sam and Twitch, where the crux of the issue is Sam basically leaning a little too hard on a confidential informant and that confidential informant has friends in high places and that spiraled into a scenario where Sam and Twitch both got suspended temporarily at least for basically acting like bad cops even though it was technically Sam and not Twitch. Twitch got in trouble because he tried to you know, at least defend his friend or at least maybe turn a blind eye to it. And at the very end of the issue, Twitch gets a call out of nowhere from an old police academy buddy who says, hey, I've got a murder on my hands. And we end the issue with a big pile of body parts in the middle of a pit that looks like the work of a serial killer. Okay, let's jump into the events of Sam and Twitch case file number two. We catch up sort of like in a split timeline scenario where we have uh, the events happening at night where Sam goes to Twitch's home to try and make amends parallel we see twitch driving out of town to whatever destination uh, that his friend was calling from in the previous issue sam shows up he's bearing gifts which is a pot of flour and a bottle of wine and he's trying to make amends for it he said look i screwed up i know i screwed up but uh, i'm trying to make things right i tried to talk to uh, the police chief try to smooth things over told him that you had nothing to do with it twitch is listening but sort of uh, under, skeptical about Sam's intentions but when the conversation appears to be going down a similar path that it always goes down which is Twitch just saying okay and going along with it suddenly snappo Helen's wife who is standing nearby listening to the conversation just goes off on Sam and say look if you're going to be a corrupt cop that's your business if you're going to burn down your career that's your business don't take my husband with it because when you get suspended he gets suspended when he gets suspended our, our home is in jeopardy. I'm, his wife, his children now have to worry about whether or not they're going to have enough money coming in to, to eat, to keep a roof over our head. If you're going to be a jerk, you'd be a jerk by yourself and get the hell out of my house. And so that ends the <laughs> Sam's attempt at making an apology. Which brings us to the other timeline, which is cut forward about, about a day or so, where Twitch is driving in his car and he makes it to Plainfield, Indiana. And that's the scene of where the murders from the first issue took place, so supposedly. He drives to the police station and he says, hey, I want to find uh, Detective Jim Trussell, who is the guy that he went to the police academy with. And uh, he meets some cops as he's coming into the police station. They seem a little skeptical because he's a out-of-towner. He's a <laughs> not a townie, he's not a local, and they seem a little bit skeptical, but their suspicion looks a little bit too rough and a little, little strange. Uh, but once he mentions, mentions that he's detective from New York, he says, oh, you're Jim's uh, friend. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me take you in. And they decide to uh, lead him into the police station where they can find his old uh, police buddy. When they get into the police station, the, uh, the cops lead Twitch over to his old friend, who is now a detective, Jim Tressel. They're hugs and handshakes and making eye contact. And it's just like the years in between the police academy and now had never been there. So they're really buddy buddy chummy chummy catching up on old times and jim is just over the moon that he's getting help from a big new york city detective to try and help him out with a potentially a serial murder case and he says hey let me take you to the hotel make sure you carry all your seats i'm going to comp you on everything you don't have to pay for a thing we want you comfortable we want you set and secure trestle is going out of his way super duper out of his way to make sure that twitch is treated like family and given all the courtesy that, that they can muster. It seems a little off-putting just from the standpoint of it's just so over the top and it's so accommodating and it's so friendly, but I think that's the intention here. And then that's where he leads him to the, he leads Twitch to the uh, hotel. Now the hotel seems like a clean and respectable place. 
It's got the little bell on the counter and all the amenities that you could possibly want from uh, just a nice, clean, safe place to stay. He even greets the uh, woman behind the counter and she's super over the moon kind and accommodating, saying, sure, welcome to have you. I'm glad you could stay with us. It all seems too neat, too friendly in a little strange, a little off-putting in a suspicious kind of way. Then we cut over back to Jim Trestle with his police buddies that we saw from the first time Twitch drove up to the police station. They're all in a cop car together and they notice there's a homeless guy sitting on the street outside a boarded up storefront. And they say, hey, buddy, you can't, you can't, you can't panhandle here. We got to get you someplace where you can panhandle. Here's some money, uh, but you just can't be here. So they drive him to a place that looks like it's on the outskirts of town. And then later in that night, the homeless guy is just sort of walking down this lonely road next to a cornfield. A black dr dr a van drives up, says, hey, buddy, you need a ride? Come on in. He gets in the van and then boom, gunshot rings out. And that's the end of the issue. Now you say, might say, well, wait a minute, that's it? That's all that happens? Twitch goes to a town, homeless guy, death? Yep, that's pretty much it. This issue scene-wise is very small. And we'll talk about that in the pros and cons in a second. So what do we like about this issue? Well, McFarlane and Groff are really taking their time building out the world and the environment and the situations that are facing Twitch as far as being a guest cop coming from out of town to help with a murder investigation. You definitely get the impression that as, a, that as Twitch drives up to the police station and he meets these police officers and he sees what's going on, that something is off, something doesn't feel right, something's kind of fishy. Uh, so that impression comes through loud and clear, which is great. You want to have that air of um, paranoia or mistrust that's going on. And then that last scene really brings it home that something is definitely up and that uh, whatever is going on here, it's not just a simple murder case. There's there's something more nefarious or um, malignant going on under the scenes related to both the police officers and, and possibly the town as a whole. So that atmosphere and, uh, and that feeling of dread and paranoia comes through really strong, which is great. What didn't we like about the issue? Uh, to be blunt, this story is moving very slowly. It feels like things are happening, but there's so much time spent on conversations that don't really have any meaning or impact. That whole beginning scene with Sam and Twitch and Twitch's wife, Helen, having that argument is fine to kind of emphasize that they've got a rift between them, but it doesn't really go anywhere and it's not necessarily meaningful to Twitch's uh, task of going to this town and investigating a serial killer. So there's lots, lots of stuff that builds out the world, but the plot is moving at a snail's pace. It just feels like you're waiting for something to grab you. You're waiting for the wow moment. Now, technically speaking, the last page in this issue, much like the last page in the first issue, is the wow moment, but it comes at the very end, and you're just sort of wondering, the, most of the issue is just sort of nice and just sort of flows at a leisurely pace to get to that wow moment. So even though the ending is satisfying, the beginning to get to the ending, not so much. Switch gears and talk about the art. Simon Kondransky's art is definitely not the same as what you would expect from an image, Todd McFarlane, spawn verse type of comic. This is very much a um, photorealistic, grounded kind of story that you would see in, in comics that might come out of, say, something from Scout or uh, maybe, yeah, Scout is the one that comes to mind. Maybe some of the smaller publishers like um, Second Sight or um, Source Point Press or may maybe even um, Blood Moon, something like that. That's not to say that it's bad art necessarily. It's just very different. And it's sort of photorealistic and definitely uses a lot of reference photography to get the art across. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't feel like it belongs as part of the Spawnverse. Now, maybe that's the positive. Maybe that was the intention. But if you're saying, okay, is this this is Sam and Twitch from Spawn. You don't, you wouldn't know that at all from looking from at the art. You would think this is just some kind of indie comic about um, a serial killer or some kind of weird town that's that's um, that's harboring some kind of undercurrent, like maybe a cult or something. Uh, you wouldn't think this was related to Spawn in any stretch, and, and Spawn definitely does not make a cameo in this. So, if you like referenced photo referenced art, art that looks very um, photorealistic and um, is does, has nothing to do with the kind of the image style 
if you want to call it that the image house style then you're in good shape if you're looking for something that makes this feel a little bit more less connected to the spawn verse visually speaking you don't get that here so what do we think about sam and twitch case files number two final thoughts uh, the mystery at its heart is intriguing and the atmosphere of paranoia and distrust or mistrust that sort of bubbles underneath the surface of this town, which is Plainfield, Indiana, is, is, is very palpable. So if you want something that kind of puts you on edge and makes you kind of think that something's going on and but it's hidden and you're not quite sure what to expect, this comic achieves that. On the downside, the pacing is dreadfully slow for the main plot. There's a lot of world building which is going on, which is not necessarily bad, but at some point the world has in the world building and the plot have to move together at a reasonable pace. There's too much world building, not enough plot pace, and it feels like you're just sort of listlessly floating down the river until you get to the last page, which has the wow moment. So not quite sure if you're satisfied with that or not. For us, it didn't feel as satisfying as it could be. Therefore, we're going to give Salmon Twitch Case Files number two from Image Comics a 7 out of 10. The atmosphere is good. The art is good, although radically different from what you would expect from a Spawnverse comic. But the pacing is just dreadfully slow. And the plot needs to pick up or at least to grab you uh, sooner in the issue rather than waiting for the very last page. But what do you think? Are you enjoying this series? Do you think uh, a departure from the typical Spawn stuff is right up your alley and you are looking for something different? Or is this too far uh, afield for what you're used to from the Spawnverse and it just doesn't feel like it connects in any way? I want to hear your comments. Uh, thank you for joining. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like more reviews just like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.